Hello everybody, Grant Helm here, personal trainer and yoga instructor at the JCA. Today we are going to be doing more of a power flow, so we're going to be moving a little bit more with also working through strong different holds and movements. And to start off our practice today, I want you to be in a comfortable seated position. You can either be sitting in a chair on the ground your feet in front of you or in a nice comfortable cross-legged position. And the breathing exercise we're going to start off today is called a Kapalabhati breathing or in layman's terms, breath of fire. Essentially what we're doing is we're heating up our core and kind of lubricating our spinal cord and preparing for the movements to follow. And it kind of creates a little bit of heat before we actually move as well too. And so what we do, I want you to place your fingers, kind of ball them up to a fist with your thumb. And your hands are going to be above your shoulders. You can have a more diagonal or height with our thumb pointing back. We take a nice full inhale, exhale out halfway, and it's a contraction of the core and diaphragm as it kind of pulses the air out. And then you just kind of relax and air is going to flow back in naturally. So it's going to look like... So it's kind of a hard forced breathe, exhaling out the nose and a subtle soft inhale through the nose. And we are going to do this for a couple minutes. And even though the shoulders and arms may start getting heavy, keep those hands up and it's going to feel nice and good when we are done. So begin with those hands up over your head, nice full inhale. Exhale halfway and begin. Well, one more minute. Thirty more seconds. Take a nice full inhale and hold it. And exhale, sigh and release. You can lower your hands down. Maybe do a couple of shoulder shrugs and loosen up the shoulders. Start with the other way. Notice how the breath enters and leaves the body now. Good, slowly interlace those hands in front of you, keeping the elbows together. All we're gonna do is bring one elbow up and forward over the other. Notice as one elbow comes up and forward over the other, it causes these wrists to turn. How fluid can you do this? Lubricating those wrists, preparing for our plank holes or possibly handstand, that's in your practice. And moving one elbow up and back. Now this may feel a little bit more awkward, but it's okay. Just visualize those elbows going up and back over each other as it carries the same movement to the wrist. Okay, releasing the hands down. Inhale those shoulders up and forward. Exhale down and back. A couple more. Inhale up and forward. Exhale down and back. One more. Inhale up and forward. Exhale down and back and reverse. Inhale up and back. Exhale down and forward. Inhale up and back. Exhale down and forward. Inhale up and back. Exhale down and forward. Good. Inhale those arms in front of the face. Exhale, press the palms away from you as you round your back. And now maintain this cat-like position. Drop your right shoulder to your right hip. 
and drop that left shoulder to that left hip and a couple more times each side. Keeping those hands interlaced, palm facing away from you. Just inhale those arms overhead as you pull the heart and chest through. And exhale, sigh, release. A couple more of this movement. Inhale, palms to the face. Exhale, press the palms away from you as you round your back. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, arms come down the side. One more. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, press the palms away from you as you round your back. Inhale, heart and chest come through. Exhale, release. Keeping your right hand on your mat, that left palm comes up and over. Nice side body stretch. Make, make sure that left hip still stays on the ground. As you slowly turn that chest, reaching out to that left hand, nice long line of extension. Inhale, we rise back up. This time the left arm stays down, right arm comes up and over, palm faces down, keeping that right hip on that ground. Breathe, relax in the face. And slowly rotate that chest, reaching out through that right hand. And inhale, we rise up. Left hand comes across to the right knee. Nice full inhales, we lengthen the spine. Exhale, twist to the right. At the bottom of the exhale, see if we draw that belly button up and in towards the spine just a little bit more, engaging in the Uddiyana Bandha, your core lock. We're gonna be referring back to this a lot through the practice. So inhale back to center, right hand comes across, nice full inhale, exhale, draw that belly button to the spine. As you twist and lengthen, And slowly come back to center. Let's go one more each way. Left hand comes across. Nice full inhale. Exhale, pull and twist towards the right. Inhale, we lengthen. Come back to center. Exhale, twist towards the left. Bottom of the exhale. Draw the belly button up and in just a little bit more. Good. Slowly come back to center. Coming onto all fours. Make sure your wrists underneath your shoulders, knees underneath the hips. Coming to a few rounds of cat and cow where we inhale, drop the belly, the spine lengthens as the gaze stays towards the front of the mat. Keep that back of the neck nice and long. Exhale, press the ground away from you as you round your back. You can add additional movements to this like rocking that body back and forth in both the cat and the cow. Just make sure your movement follows your breath. Your breath always guides you on this journey. And if you never maintain that smooth breath in any of the poses we're doing, maybe we back out of it just a little bit. Good. Coming back to all fours, nice strong position. We're coming to what's called uh, Agni Sora Kriya, which is another type of lock, the breath that we did in the beginning. It's a nice full inhale, except when we exhale, we exhale out the mouth, force every bit of air you have out of you as you round in the cat. Then you're gonna close your mouth, close your nose, and it's kind of like taking a false inhale, where you draw your belly button up and in towards the spine, and you wanna hold that in as long as you can until you can't anymore. Then you release that hold of the stomach before you inhale. And if you don't do that, you're gonna kind of choke on your own breath and make, make you feel kind of awkward. So it's a nice full inhale and cap. Exhale, press the ground away from you. I'm sorry, inhale and cap. Exhale, press in the cap as you round your spine. False inhale. Then release the belly and inhale. And that false inhale so it feels like you're just sucking your belly literally up and then everything, all the organs up into the rib cage. So inhale into cow, exhale out the mouth. False inhale. Always make sure you release the core first before you breathe in. And we got one more. Exhale, press the ground away from you. And the cat. And release. Come in nice little body circles. Warm up those wrists a little more. Get used to having a little bit of pressure. Kind of act like you're gripping your fists through the ground. Keep those wrists nice and strong, and let's rotate the other way. Good. 
to turn the pronate in those hands, or I'm sorry, uh, exhale and rotate in those hands. And their fingers turn away from you, where the palm, fingertips are facing towards your palms away. Nice inhale, exhale, sink those hips back. Inhale, come forward. For the first couple, try to keep the heel of your palm down on the ground still. Then after a couple, then you may lift that palm as you work more back to the hand. Then the last couple, you just keep the fingertips on the ground and try to get that elbow to touch the ground. So you're lifting most of those hands up, working deeper through it. Good. We're going one hand uh, facing down, your other hand, so you're going to left hand on the ground, back of the palm facing, the fingers are pointing towards the right. As your right hand comes on top, and kind of matches that fist and slowly bend that elbow out and around to the side, just a few circles. Maybe we twist it the other way and we lean to the right or lean towards whatever direction you have those fingers pointing. And we come back to center, reverse the hand. So if your left hand was down, you can put your right hand down first. The left hand comes on top and slowly move those elbows in gentle circles. Maybe circle the other way. Good, leaning to our left or whatever direction your fingers are pointing and slowly come back, coming back to all fours, tucking the toes behind you and all we're doing is just going to hover draw that belly button to the spine and just hover those knees just off the ground, pressing that ground away from you nice and strong. Now whenever we do these strong holds, I want you to tap into the parasympathetic nervous system but even though we are under stress, we are under tension, we're able to keep the face nice and relaxed. So notice, relax the eyebrows, relax the jaw. If your tongue's pressed on the roof of your mouth, relax that now. Let's do a couple more breaths here. One more. Good, next exhale, sink those hips up and back as we come to our first downward dog of the day. Make sure the creases of your wrist are parallel with the front of your mat. Kind of pressing that mat away from you, still drawing the belly button to the spine, the sit bones lengthen towards those heels. And you can maybe start off moving a little bit of movement in that downward dog. You can pedal those feet, sway those hips side to side, whatever movement feels good to you. Make sure we maintain that smooth breath, face nice and relaxed. Slowly walk those feet all the way to the front of your mat for our first forward fold of the day. We'll keep a big bend in those knees, let that chest rest on top of those thighs. Rocking a little side to side. Inhale, press the both feet nice and evenly as you round all the way up, vertebra to vertebrae. Gaze comes up last, arms come up overhead. Exhale, press the palms together and then meet in the center of the chest. Engaging the core, nice strong legs root up to the ground. As we come into the few rounds of sun salutation, inhale, arms come up, nice gentle back bend. Exhale, lead with the heart as we fold. Inhale, we lift halfway, bring your right heel towards your butt, take a big step to the back of the mat as the back knee lowers. Inhale, those arms come up for a nice little, little lunge. And slowly return the hands to the earth. Step the uh, left foot to the back. You can keep knees on the ground if you're just warming up, or if you want to, you can come into a full plank as you slowly lower Chaturanga. Inhale, pull your heart and chest up through for a general cobra. Exhale, lower back down, do a couple more for our first cobra. Inhale, heart and chest lifts up. Lengthen the spine, back the neck's nice and long, staring at the mat in front of you. And lower. One more inhale, pull the heart and chest through for Jim Cobra. And sink those hips back. Child's pose briefly before we tuck the toes. Lift those hips up and back. Downward dog. Couple breaths here. Remember this time the right leg lifts again. Step in the right foot between the hands. Back knee lowers, untuck the back toes. Inhale, arms come through. Up, energetically reach those fingers up towards the sky, melting that left hip forward. Slowly return the hands to the front, tuck the back toes. Slowly step that front foot back to the front. Inhale as we lift halfway. Exhale, 
fold. Press through both feet nice and evenly as you round up vertebrae by vertebrae. Arms come up overhead, exhale, palms to chest. Good. You're going again, but through a little bit faster pace. Inhale, arms come up, gentle back bend. Exhale, we fold. Inhale, we come up halfway. This time we take our left heel towards our butt, big step to the back of the mat, back knee lowers. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, hands return back to the earth, step that from the front to the back. Slowly lower chaturanga. Inhale, pull your heart and chest through for gentle cobra. Exhale, child's pose or downward dog. And breathe here. Now lift that left leg back up towards the sky. Slowly step the left foot between the hands, back knee lowers. Inhale, arms come up, reach those fingertips up towards the sky. And slowly bring the hands back to the earth, tuck the back toes, step that foot from the back to the front. Inhale, rub halfway. Exhale, we fold. Inhale, press through both feet nice and evenly as you round up vertebrae by vertebrae. Arms come up overhead. Exhale, palms to chest. Good. Again, we're going to add a little bit more to the sequence. Inhale, arms come up, nice gentle back bend. Exhale, heart leads us to the earth. Inhale, lift up halfway. This time, the right heel back to the buzz. We take a big step back. Back knee lowers. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, sink those hips back as the left toes come up. As it comes to a nice runner stretch. Good, shifting our hips back forward, tucking, uh, bringing our foot from the front to the back as we're back in this plank position. Slowly lower chaturanga. Inhale, pour yourself through for upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Right leg lifts in the air, step the foot between the hands, back knee lowers, inhale, arms reach up, keeping those palms facing towards each other as we melt that front hip towards the earth, and we shift the hips back as the front toes rise, nice full inhale, exhale, round that spine over that right leg. Slowly shift those hips forward, we tuck those back toes, step the foot from the uh, back to the front, inhale, we lift up halfway, exhale, we fold, inhale, press the both feet nice and evenly, as the arms come up overhead, exhale, palms to chest, last round for classical sun salutation, inhale, come with a nice gentle back bend, exhale, we fold, inhale, we lift up halfway, this time take a left foot towards the butt, big step to the back of the mat, Back knee lowers, inhale, arms come up, exhale, sink those hips back, inhale, so as you come forward, set the foot from the back to the front, as we exhale, slowly lower chaturanga, inhale, pour yourself through general cobra, upper dog, exhale, downward dog, and breathe. But before we finish this side, do a quick little quarter. There's a few different variations you can do. One, you can simply inhale as we come to plank. Exhale, press back to downward dog. You can hang out in plank position this whole time. Or if you are someone that works on handstands, you can work on little monkey hops where we simply bend our knees. This work we're getting our hips up in the air and slowly coming back down. So you can do either of those options or you can simply Stay in downward dog, or even better yet, child's pose. Ooh. One more. Good. If you were practicing those monkey hops, come back to downward dog. If you're practicing those planks, downward dog as well as also. As the left leg lifts, step the left foot between the hands. Back knee lowers. Inhale. Arms come up, sink those hips back, left toes come up as we fold. Sink those hips forward, tuck the back toes, step the foot from the back to the front. Inhale, we lift halfway. Exhale, we fold. 
Inhale, round up vertebrae by vertebrae. Arms come up overhead. Exhale, palms to chest. Coming into sun citation B variation. Big toes together, heels slightly apart. Inhale, sink those hips back down to the low chair. Reaching those fingers forward. Let's go palms in front of the chest. Right elbow cross over from that left knee. Nice inhale. Exhale, twist up towards your left. Inhale to center. Exhale, twist to the right. Inhale, arms extend back up. Still stay in that low chair. Exhale as we fold. And as we practice that uh, Uddiyana Bandha engagement, at the bottom of the exhale and our forward fold, see if you can draw that belly button up and in towards the spine just a little bit more. And our forward fold engaging in Uddiyana Bandha. Inhale, we lift halfway. You can walk, step, or jump your feet to the back of the mat. Exhale, lower chaturanga. Inhale, heart and chest lift up through. Exhale, downward dog. This time we're going to lift that right leg up in the air. Open that hip up. Now if you want to, you can drop that left elbow towards the ground too. Free variation for shoulder stand or dolphin pose. Extend that left elbow back up. Rotate those hips back forward. Step the right foot between uh, on the outside of the right hand. Left heel pivots down. Inhale, come up, warrior one. Breathe here. Extend the top of that left thigh back towards the hamstrings. Draw that belly button to the spine. As we pull that right hip back towards our left heel. Even though we're in this nice strong hold here, our face is nice and relaxed. Here we're going to pivot that back heel. As we come to warrior two, make sure the arch come, the heel of the front foot comes to the arch of the back foot. Pulling that back thigh back towards the hamstring. Energetically reach out through the fingertips. And one thing I like doing to get the correct shoulder engagement is I go with the palms face up and you got that belly of the elbow facing up towards the sky. Keep that facing up as you rotate those palms back down. That's the engagement there. So the shoulder should be nice and light. Engagement from the back side. Nice and long, right palm faces up. Inhale, lift the arm up, start gazing. And right elbow goes to the right knee, left arm spirals down and around, palm facing down. An extended side angle. And slowly rotate that chest back down. Right foot meets the left. Slowly lower chaturanga. Inhale, pour your heart and chest through. Exhale, downward dog. Breathe here. This time that left leg is going to lift high into the sky. You can bend that left knee, open up that left hip. You can hang out here if you want to take it further. You can drop that right elbow down towards the ground as that hip opens. Keep that face nice and relaxed. A smooth Ujjayi breath. And extend that right arm. Left foot pivot, uh, steps to the outside of the left hands. Right heel pivots down. Inhale, arms come up, warrior one. Breathe here. Keep the toes nice and soft on that front foot. Anchoring through the balls of the feet and the heel. Face nice and soft. And pivot that back heel. Arms squared and match the hips. Pull that right hip back towards the right hamstring. Make sure that left knee stays on top of the left ankle. As a spiral from the inner left knee to the outer right hip. And let's go both palms face up. Keep the belly of the elbow up as you rotate the palms back down. And breathe. Left palm faces up, inhale, left arm rises, stargazing. Left elbow, the left knee, spiral that right arm around, extend the side angle. Palm face down as you reach, reach, reach. And rotate those hips back forward as we step the foot from the front to the back. Slowly lower chaturanga. Inhale, pull your heart chest through. Exhale, downward dog. Couple breaths here. Slow down the breathing. Draw those exhales, making them a little bit longer than the inhales.
and you're gonna walk, step, or jump back to the front of your mat. So bend those knees, lift those hips up as you bring yourself from the back slowly to the front. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold. Sink those hips down, belly button to the spine as we lift those arms up, a low chair. Exhale as we rise. High chair. Good, one more round. Inhale, nice gentle back bend. Exhale, we fold. I'm doing the wrong salutation. So I'm from here, I want you to inhale, see those hips, arms rise, we come to low chair. Palms come to your chest. This time we're going to twist to the right first. Nicely inhale, exhale, press the palms together as you twist towards the right. Inhale to center. Right elbow crosses left. So we twist to the left. Inhale, we come back to center. Sit a little bit lower. Draw that belly button to the spine. Set the bones reach towards the heels as the toes are nice and light. As we extend forward fold. Inhale, lift halfway. Walk, step, or jump to the back of the mat. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, pull the heart and chest through. Exhale, downward dog, and breathe. And moments of tension, how much can we keep the face relaxed, relaxing the jaw, maintain that soft breath. Even though our mind or our body may be screaming for something else, we can calm ourselves down just by simply drawing out those exhales. Relaxing the face, relaxing the toes. This time we're gonna lift the left leg out first, bend that left knee, open up those hips. And if you want to, you can slowly step that left foot behind you. As you come to a wild thing, see those hips, arms rise, or hips rise. Or you can stay in just a flipping dog, either one's okay. Slowly rotate back, left leg rises up again towards the air, set the left foot to the outside of the hands. Back heel pivots, inhale, arms come up, warrior one. This time, instead of coming to warrior two, we're going to pivot our back heel where we come to a nice crescent lunge. Arms are going to come back from behind us. Slowly lean that chest over that thigh. We're not resting our chest on the thigh. It's a nice strong hold here. And also, we're here gently press your left heel into the ground and pull it back towards you as it activates that hamstring. And most importantly, we relax the eyebrows, relax the jaw, relax the breath. Nice strong hold here. The toes are nice and light. Right hand comes to the inside of that left foot. Spiral and twist towards the left. You're gonna rotate the chest forward. Back knee lowers. Sink those hips back. Nice deep inhale. Exhale, round over that front leg. Right hand stays on the block or on the ground. Exhale and spiral towards that left. Press it through the ball of the toe of that left foot. Breathe. Just slowly rotate the chest back down. Sink those hips forward. I lift that back knee, tuck the back toe, set the foot from the back, from the front to the back. Slowly lower chaturanga. Inhale, pull the heart and chest through. Exhale, downward dog and breathe. This time that right leg is going to lift high into the air. Bend that knee, open that hip. Now you may choose to stay here, or if you want to, you can choose to flip your dog where that right foot slowly comes to the earth. Sink those hips, lift those hips nice and high as you extend, reach. Press those hips up to the sky. Breathe, breathe, breathe. And slowly rotate back as that leg returns high to the sky. And step that right foot to the outside of the right hand, pivot that back heel. Inhale, come up, warrior one.
How cool to get a Canadian back to that soft breath. Here we're going to pivot that back heel, comes a nice crescent lunge. Arms come behind us. Slowly lean the heart and chest forward, not resting on our thigh, but we're holding it nice and strong. Gently press that right heel into the ground as you pull that foot closer to you to activate that hamstring. Nice strong hold here, maintain that smooth breath. Good, left hand stays on the ground. Spiral towards our right, keeping that thigh close to our chest, chest close to the thigh. Engage in Udiyana Bandha, the bottom of the exhale. We lift that belly button up and in towards the spine. Slowly rotate that chest down, back knee lowers. Sink those hips back, right toes come up, nice full inhale. Exhale, round over that right leg and breathe. Left hand stays on the ground. Nice full inhale. And at the exhale, spiral towards our right. Pressing through the ball of the toe of that right foot. Pulling that right hip back towards that left heel. Not sinking in that left shoulder, but pressing that ground away from you. Gaze can remain down on the ground or look up to your right. Either option is okay. Rotate the chest back forward. Sink those hips forward, foot from the front meets the back. As we slowly lower chaturanga. Inhale, pull your heart and chest through. Exhale, downward dog. Now we're here, you may choose to remain here. Remember, child's pose is always an option if you want to, or if you want to build more strength, we can go into tricep push-ups. As we build our shoulder stand and handstand, as we lower both elbows down, and both elbows up. There's also a step before that where if you want to load one at a time than the other, lift and lift, either of those options are okay. So let's all go do eight of them now. Slowly lower, back up, one, down, up, two, down, up, three, down, up, four, down, up, five, down, up, six, two more, down, up, seven, down, up, eight. Good, bending those knees, walk, step or jump to the front of the mat. Inhale, we lift up halfway. Exhale, we fold. Inhale, sink those hips as the arms rise, come to the little chair. Exhale, stay in high chair. Good job, we're coming into a nice strengthening pose of the, with our legs. So I'm gonna give three or four different variations that you can do. Option one, we're just coming into what's called a warrior three pose or with movement. Ball, we're going to start with the right foot rooted onto the ground. Inhale, as we lengthen the warrior three. Exhale, knee comes back up. Inhale, we lengthen. Exhale, we lift. That's number one. Number two is when we stay here in warrior three, we're going to bring that knee in, just hug that knee in close to the chest and extend back out through there. That's level two. Or a level three, we can use these blocks. Start off in warrior three, bring that foot forward as we come into a nice little low squat. Whew. Extend those legs, back up to warrior three. So there's three different options you can play with there. Either of them is okay, but let's do eight on each leg. So start on warrior three. Remember you can either hug that knee in or lift that knee back up. Lengthen or we can step on down to the ground. Use our strength and lengthen back up for two. Down. Three. Down. Four. Five. Three more. Wherever option you're doing is okay. Six for the last two, I'm gonna do the other way. Bring that knee up, seven. And eight. Whew. Shake out that right leg. Shake out both legs. Go 
are drinking water, maybe want to refrain from after the class, because when you do drink water in the middle of class, you kind of cool off that body internally. We want to try to keep that heat for as long as best as we can. And it just makes the water taste that much better at the end of class too. So let's root that left foot onto the ground. Remember the variations, you can go warrior three, the knee up, warrior three, the knee hug, or warrior three, it's a nice pistol squat. If you have blocks to help, or if you have a couch or chair, you can use the chairs next to you. Stand back for one. Sure, we're still maintaining that smooth breath. Four. Notice one side may be a little more challenging than the other, and that's normal. Five. I got one more. Six. Two more. I'm gonna go the other variation. Seven. And eight. Great job, shake those legs out. If you have your blocks, you can stack your blocks up behind you. Just go feet hip distance, toes pointing out, and we're slowly going to sit down to a nice low squat as we catch our breath here. So yes, we're still doing a pose right now, but it's a pose where you can maintain and breathe. You can sit on the blocks. If you need to, pull the heart and chest through. How quickly can you slow your breath? Relax the face, relax the jaw. Activate that parasympathetic, it's the brakes to all of our engine. It helps slows us down, slows down the heart rate, blood pressure. Help us manage the stress and anxiety when those difficult situations arise. And extend those hips back up towards the sky as we come to a nice forward fold. Another strong posture we're going into, we're coming into crow pose from here. So the variation we're going with today is one of the easiest ones you can do. We're going to knees and toes turned out. Get those knees closer to the body. We're actually going to have our fingertips kind of pointing in diagonally and the elbows pointing out and we're resting this inside the leg on top of that tricep. So you want to muscle your legs as you can. All we're doing is shifting those hips forward until the feet become light and then we lift from here. More in this variation, the sacrum stays in line with your head. So you're actually in a straight line. So our knees are out wide, inside the legs are on the back of that tricep. Lean forward, feet tight to the butt. And as you see, my head and my sacrum are in the same line. Versus the traditional crow, we're more up here and our hips are high and lifted. But this is an easier variation that we're gonna practice with. So breathe here. If you wanna take the other variation, you're more than welcome to do that. It is your practice. When you hear see if you can relax the face, relax the jaw. If the tone's on the roof of the mouth, relax that too. Drawing that belly button up and in towards the spine, engaging the Uddiyana Bandha, power center. Slowly lower, extend those legs. Feet come onto the back of the hands, inhale halfway. Exhale, nice little gorilla pose. Release those hands, inhale, round up vertebrae by vertebrae. Whew. Or maybe if you're doing this practice, pushing yourself and maybe sweat like me. So we're gonna, once we build up heat, now we wanna quickly catch our breath, calm down. So we're coming into a pier, actually let's start off with a triangle pose. So let's keep our right foot, right toes pointing forward, step our left heels back. Our right heel comes in line to arch our left foot. Let's sink that right hip back towards that left heel, extend that right arm out as we fold over that right leg and breathe. Blocks here may help you relax just a little bit more, catch that breath. Now we're gonna build a little bit more heat into those legs. 
We're gonna move that block about a foot in front to the outside of that right foot. Drag that back foot in a little closer as we slowly lift and rise up the warrior. I'm sorry, half moon. Reaching through that heel, pressing the imaginary wall away from you. Rooting the ball, the big toe of the right foot into the floor. Spiral from the inner right knee to the outer hip. Feel that engagement. We want to you can bend that left knee. Grab a hold of that left foot. Open the heart and chest up. Breathe. Slowly extend that left leg. Slowly return the left foot to be the floor as we rise. Turn our heart and chest, both toes facing towards the front of the mat as we prepare for pyramid pose on the right side. Nice full inhale. Exhale, lean the heart and chest over that front leg. Pull that right hip back towards that left heel. And as you exhale, fold over that right leg. Slowing down the breath. Left hand stays on a block as you spiral towards our right. Pulling that right hip back towards our left leg. Nice long extension of the spine. Gaze can stay down on the ground to keep the tension light on the neck. As our chest turns. Slowly rotate back to center. Grab the, the block you had him with you. Inhale, we rise. Pivot. This time we're coming, same thing on the other side. So our left toes face the back of our mat. Right foot stays pointing towards the side. Put a block on the outside of that left foot. Sinking that left hip towards that right foot. Extend that left arm out. Fold over the left leg. Breathe. Coming into half moon, so slowly drag that right foot closer, move that block about a foot into the outside of that left foot. As that right leg becomes light and we lift up, pressing the imaginary wall away through the heel and the ball of the toe, the back foot. And breathe. If you bend that knee the first time, you can do that now. Or you bend that knee, grab a hold of that foot or ankle. Oh, oh. And breathe. And slowly extend that right foot and slowly bend that knee as we rise back up. Both toes facing the back of the mat. Nice full inhale, preparing for pyramid pose. Pull that left hip towards our right heel as we lengthen that spine. And we exhale and fold. And breathe. Right hand stays on a block on the inside of that left leg. Exhale, we spiral towards our left. Keeping that gaze down on the ground, but turn that chest towards the side. And slowly return that chest down, soften in that front knee. Inhale, we rise back up. Turn the stuff that foot all the way back to the front. Coming back to a nice little low squat again, as we slowly sink down. Nice wiggle those hips a little side to side. Extend those legs, nice forward fold. And slowly walk those feet back till we come down to all fours. Now is the point where we come a little bit more play time. There's a lot of options where you can go to with this. You can either one, work on your plank holds, you can work on your crow, or you can have time to work on your versions. Uh, the, the ideal order is work on handstands first, 
then shoulder stands, and then head stands. Um, you can practice all three, but in the order because the handstands require the most strength. If you're uncomfortable, do it freestanding, more welcome to move over to a wall and kick up to a wall and just practice holding that handstand. So you can go handstand first, then we're going to shoulder stand. So handstand first, make sure the creases of your wrist are parallel to the front of your mat or towards the wall. And see how it feels today. You can move over to wall, practice hold it for as long as you can. Engaging that belly button to the spine, keeping that core tight. Active to keeping that core tight as we do these, not trying to arch our back too much. Another good way once you get comfortable is actually facing the wall, it kind of keeps you from overarching. And once you do that, give yourself enough rest, grab a block and practice shoulder stand. When I do the block, I place the bottom of the block coming into the, where the, the finger meet, where the, the last knuckle is, where the finger meets the hand. And then the thumbs kind of come on the bottom, kind of creates like a little hole where your thumb the bottom of the block is keeping those elbows and like tight to the body probably this one time here i'm already getting a little tired once again you can practice with your feet to a wall Last few moments of your upside down. They come down, you come to a nice child's pose. <sighs> you got your heart rate up, a nice little way to reward us. After that practice, is finishing with a nice pigeon pose. So let's bend that right knee towards the right wrist, left, right ankle towards the left wrist. If you have a block, blocks are great. Place a block under your right hip, even if you may not need it. Inhale, we lengthen. Exhale, fold over that right leg. Hmm. How quickly can you return to that calm state of breath? Press that ground away from you as you lift up. As we change sides. Left knee to the left wrist, left ankle to the right wrist. Put a block on those hips to keep those hips nice and square. As you fold over those legs. Soften the shoulders, relax the toes.
couple more breaths here. side, remove that block, you can shake out those legs, legs are laid out on the back, one more core exercise, extend both legs up to the air, let's stack that left foot on top of the right where you wedge the right toes into the heel of that left foot, flatten that lower back on the ground as we inhale lower third, inhale lower another third, inhale lower to the hover, exhale, all the way up and two more inhale we lower third inhale lower third inhale lower to the hover and exhale all the way up one more inhale we lower third a little bit more third inhale lower third exhale all the way up cross feet right foot's on top inhales we lower third inhale another third Inhale to the hover, exhale, all the way up, two more. Inhale third, another third, to the hover, and all the way up as we exhale. Last one, inhale third, inhale third down, inhale third, exhale. Bring the feet back to the earth. We're coming to a nice back bend. You have three options. You can take a restorative one. We're going to inhale, pick those hips up, placing the block under your sacrum. You can hold a normal bridge or if wheels in your practice, you can come up to a wheel or you can practice all three at different times. Starting off with the normal bridge, we're going to hold this for five breaths. Or if you do practice a wheel, you can tuck those fingers behind you. Lift your hips up, press the ground away as you lift all the way up. Relaxing the face, relaxing the jaw. And we slowly lower. If you're up in the wheel, if you want to take a quick restorative pose, do that now. Put the block under those hips. Remove that block, hug the knees into the chest, rock a little side to side. As we straighten the right leg, still hugging the left knee into the chest, right arm across the left knee, pull that left knee all the way over, nice twist. If you want to take it deeper, you can extend the leg, grab a hold of the foot with the hand. foot as we bring it back around. Now we hug the right knee to the chest, left leg stays straight. Cross that right knee over. I'm going to take a deep breath and extend that leg, grab a hold of that foot with the hand. little shakes any last little jitters and movements we have in us out now as we come into final shavasana and spend these last few moments just kind of basking in the gratitude that we cultivated today focus on a few things that we're grateful for whether it's the time we took to, to put into ourselves or enjoying the release that we had or a few things around you that you're grateful for whether it be people the things you have things you don't have your health.
slowly start bringing movement back to the fingers and toes. I want you to inhale, interlace those hands over your head. And take a full inhale as you reach your heels towards the front of your mat, your hands to the back. Nice full body breath so you can't breathe in anymore. Hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, side the mouth and release. Let's do one more just like that. Nice full inhale. Hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, side release. Roll over to your right side. Pause in here for a few moments as that blood flows from the left hemisphere to the right hemisphere. The motherly side, the nurturing, caring, loving side of the brain. As we press ourselves up to a seated position, keeping those eyes closed. As we take the gratitude that we cultivated from this practice today out into the world. Namaste. Thank you for joining. I hope you enjoyed it. And hope you have a great day. Bye.